Hey, it's Ian from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts again, and today I've got a diagnosis to do on a surprise, surprise, LX. Okay, so across from I bought this uh, about seven months ago and uh, went to Hawaii about seven months ago, but now they're complaining that uh, the scooter just stopped on them. So I've had a quick drive of the scooter. I think I know what it is, but I'm going to go through what, uh, what diagnosis you should do on these if you're very unsure. But uh, the first thing we did was take the scooter out for a drive and it seemed all right. Jenny did it, basically. Uh, went out for a drive, went over a load of bumps. That's the first thing you should do is test drive the scooter, see if it's something really obvious like batteries. Battery light stayed on pretty good. Um, so we got to talking to the customer and basically asked them some basic questions. How do you charge it? where do you store it and uh, it was kind of a, a mismatched story so kind of trying to get out of the customer what they do with the scooter and what actually happened and what are the symptoms that's the first part of your diagnosis is what are the symptoms and they just basically said they were driving along and it just stopped well uh, typically not really but if it does that you would then start to think batteries but they said no the lights were still on full no they didn't recognize a beep code or they didn't listen for one she just basically uh, one of the things that the customer said is they they were doing this wiggling with the brake lever like that and that's never a good thing to do it doesn't accomplish anything apart from cause damage to the brake or the mug switch. So never do that. It's either on or off. Uh, it doesn't help the scooter in any way. It's more than likely going to be a detrimental thing to, to the scooter. So anyway, this is one we reconditioned about seven months ago. So I took the scooter out. I actually did a, a rough... A rough um, low test basically by putting my feet on the floor putting full, full throttle on scooter moving put my feet on the floor to sort of like create drag and the lights only went down one light so i pretty much ruled out the batteries but it could have been fully charged so i still would check the batteries but uh, after i i took it outside i did a, a lot of stop start stop start stop start so basically drive along, stop, let the brake engage, drive along again. And I got down the ramp just outside our door and it did stop. It just stopped, pressed the throttle. I could hear the click of the controller, hear the click of the brake, but the scooter wouldn't move. So your next thought would be maybe a throttle. Uh, could be that. So I tested the throttle, wiggled it up and down didn't make any effect it still kept stopping it, it it would just sit there in the brake of you'd hear the release of the brake you'd hear the click of the controller so could be a controller could be brake so what I did then is while I was inside in front of the customer I got the scooter rolling eventually it got it got it rolling and then released the brake and drive around with the brake in the released mode basically in freewheel mode while it's driving and that won't give you a five beep code it'll carry on driving and it's only until you release the throttle and reset the system one of the keys on the system sort of like does a stop then it'll detect that the um, freewheel lever is, is disengaged but the scooter carried on moving it was fine I put the brake back in, in gear, tried starting, it wouldn't go. I heard the click of everything, and the scooter wouldn't move forward or backwards. 
So I then reached around the back, released the brake lever, and off it went. So that says to me, brake. First of all, brake. Then I took a closer look at the back of the scooter. So imagine this is still on the scooter. And what I see here is white. White along here, white along there. Now, this is while it was still on the scooter, so I couldn't see anything else, but I could see the brake. Now, when you have a brake, they're normally pretty shiny like that. There may be a bit of dirt on it, but they're pretty shiny. But when they're like this, a powdery color, where it's just dull, and this is tarnished as well, that means there's moisture gone into it. Now these brakes are very finicky where it comes to moisture and water. They will break, just like that. If you get any water and moisture into this, any part of this brake mechanism, they will fail. Now, but what I'm thinking is happening is that, I don't know if you can see it. If you look just about there that disc in between those two metal things one here one there is the actual what they call the clutch of the brake and that should spin freely see it spin there and what i'm thinking is happening is when that's engaged it's not spinning when that's engaged it won't spin and then the brake automatically uh, opens up the electromagnetic brake will open up and then release that so it basically does that, goes into freewheel every time you press the throttle. Now, noticing something else, you can see all that, that sand, all that sand in there. And that, I believe, has got into the brake. Moisture, salt, and they said that it happened before they went to Hawaii. If it happened before they went to Hawaii, then there wouldn't be any salt in there. There wouldn't be no sand in there because the scooter, it wasn't working. They said it just stopped working. It, it, they didn't use it. But that's got all sand in it. And I'm guessing the salt water and the sand has got into the brake and damaged the brake. So that's how you want to do a diagnostic on your brake. So I'm going to look into it further. I'm going to take the wheel off. I'm going to have to release the motor from basically the, the transaxle because of this setup on the LX. You can't get the brake off. You can, but it's going to be a pain in the butt. It's quicker just to take the motor off. Three bolts, one there, one there, and one around the other side, which I'll show you. So there's three bolts, I think six mil Allen, and it's quicker just to take that off and uh, just unhook your cable ties that way i can get to the brake easily take it off and uh, i'm gonna do a solid and try and clean it for her and see if that helps and if it doesn't after i've test drove it and it still does it then i'll just replace the brake i've got some spares i've got one here so i can always put that on there for her instead of her spending whatever it's going to cost to replace the motor and brake Always have problems with these LXs, always. Because of these, the way this shroud's made up, this is all exposed. And they always tend to get problems. But it doesn't help matters when you've got sand and water in, in it. So, yeah, that, that brake should be like that. It should be shiny. And it's not, it's matte. I've just rubbed that clean. So... So that's what I think it is. I've told her to leave it with me. She's in no real rush for it, but uh, I'll uh, get that stripped down. And uh, there's the, the rest of the scooter here. As I pointed out to her, there's all water stain in there where water's got into it all around here, all over the place. So, yeah, consumer error. So, I'll uh, get into doing that. So, I'm just going to 
release these off and then uh, see if we can get into the brake and take that off. So here we go. Okay, so make sure we're on, make sure we've got volume this time. So the first thing you're going to need is a three quarter socket. I'm going to need just for the wheel bolt three quarter. I need that. I need that. Yep. Just take your wheel off. Watch your keyway. Drop, drop it. Not somewhere. There it is. So take that off. Pull that to one side. That way you've got access into taking your allens off. I'm going to try and use that. See if that will help. But I'll take those just in case. Six mil. Of course, these aren't numbered. They're not holding on by much force. Basically what I'm doing is I'm doing the three Allen bolts that go through to the hold the motor in. Just so I can get access to the brake. Because like I said, this side I can't do it. That's the second one. If you're unsure of where your motor goes, but your brake's gonna be on it, but you can always mark on the motor and the transaxle where it goes back in but there's only two positions it will go in upside down or the right way up but if you've got your brake on there it won't be the wrong way up common sense this one's a little bit more difficult to do but it's in place This is a smaller bolt. You can see the motor starting to come loose. One thing that is going to be a pain in the butt putting it back together like this because of that little keyway that's in this part of the motor. There you go. Two long bolts, one short bolt in the motor, just three to hold it in. And we're going to have to cut this off. Just to give me a bit of extra wire to play. I hope I can get it out. I may have to take this connector block off. perfectly in the way. I'm hoping I can get it out. Yeah, the keyway is still in there. So you may have to take this brake handle off if you want to do it this way, but I can still get access. They only need to undo th all four of them, but just uh, take three out and leave one in. Just to release the brake. 
as I said in past videos, just be careful with this part of the brake where that that one is. Because of your wiring. This one take three out that are, that are easy to get to. And then just loosen off the fourth one. And this is going to be a pain in the dick to get back in. I hope we can see this. Yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit for you. So we're just taking these Allen 64ths, I think it was 964 Yep. 964 Okay. So that should break off where you can unplug it. So just basically inspecting for damage. Kind of like your brake rotors when you get stone stuck in there and it gouges a line around it. Very similar to that. Okay, let me get a flashlight. Or torches, they say in the UK. Just make sure there's nothing on there. Definitely sand there. Well, basically, what I'm doing is just looking inside there. Hmm, there's sand everywhere, and I noticed on the motor as well, there's, see that, water damage there, you can't quite see it because they, see it there, there's two spots there, that's water that's uh, dribbled down, and it's salty water because it's white. Otherwise, it'd be just like a brownie colour with dust. But that's salty water. I'm not going to lick it and find out. <laughs> yes, John? Do you have a power? A what? A power. USB? Uh huh. Like a power bank, or then, you know, for charge your battery or whatever. No. I've only got a plug in. Huh? Only one of them. That's all I've got. No, I would you can move. I need it to move around. Mm -mm. No, okay. I, know, I know what you mean. Yeah, one well, of those power bank things now. Yeah. <sighs> okay. If that brake's not releasing correctly, it's just going to lock up.
put a different brake on it. It's awkward to put new brakes on when they're on the side like this. I'm just going to guess at where it was for now. It's going to have to come off again. So. I just want to test it. Just to make sure I'm correcting my thinking that it's the brake and not the controller. But it ran with the brake off. And when I pull the brake back on it, it wouldn't run. So it says to me that it's the brake binding up. They haven't got a knot on it. Is it a bolt or is it a screw? So I don't know if there's it in the right position or not. More than likely not, knowing me. Jenny's just going to have to go to lunch, that's why I keep nipping in and out. Get this sand off of here. I don't know why it's not working. I've got a good idea what it is. to lay it down to put it back in. I don't want to st strip in shrouds of it. see because I haven't moved the camera. Okay. Okay, you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to line up that keyway into the socket that's in the drive line. around to see where the motor bolts are there. So I did get it right. <sighs> Hallelujah. And then we can just thread those back in. At least get one of them in there. I can stand it up. Oh. Oh. 
by feel. I would hope a great deal. Just nip that up. So at least we can get a little bit of bolt. So that's those two in. You don't want to cross thread these, it's only aluminum they're going into. Aluminium. Uh, the worst thing you can do is start cross threading it. And then just tighten it. Finish tying it up with that. And then give it a, a nip up with that. Keyway, make sure it doesn't fall out. Drop your washer on. Drop your knot on. Just tighten that up. Let's plug that back in. I should have tested the brake before I put it in, actually. <sighs> Such a goof. See what happens. Let me test it, test it first. Okay, that's released. That's locked. So what I'm doing basically is testing the top two pins. I'm getting a weird reading. So I think that break may be no good. Don't know if you can see that on the screen. So I'm testing the top two pens, and it should be 59, and it's really one point something or other, so I think that may be a problem. Just testing the micro switch. Ah, 
That's where it should be, 59. So there may be a problem with this wiring. I think there may be a problem with this wiring. Or even that connection. Let's test it again. Okay. I don't want to pull a break in there. It's not going to be any good. Okay. So. Let's try it on the scooter. Easy one hundred. There we go. Put that back on. Okay. So we know the brakes are working now. thinking there may be some corrosion in the controller. New brake and it still did it. Alrighty. So we're still getting the problem. So I'm gonna test the batteries just to rule them out. Checking the date on these. So it's telling. All the connections look okay. That one's a bit loose. But it was on. So. No damage to the negative cable. No damage to the negative. Let's give it a load test. Let's see what it's doing. months old so it's showing about 10.6 volts these haven't been charged last night so these are just as the customer brought them in just over 13 volts okay so no issues with the batteries 
They're fine. I didn't notice when I was driving it. It sounds like a... I want to say sparking sound, but it sounds like it's shorting somewhere along the line. So I think I can roll out brake. Because it's still doing it on a different brake. Look at all this sound. It's all sand in there. I want to have a quick look at the uh, controller. As with all four wheel scooters, a little harder to disassemble because of this front section. seeing muck on scooters with these you can't tip on the back like I normally do because of that shroud Uh, LX, let me show you. If I can grab you. Uh, hold on a second. Okay, so the LX has screw there, screw there. That's the articulating section for the front suspension. That part, that's your main frame section. You can see there's all water damage there, but it doesn't look like any there. Another screw there, another screw there to release the shroud, just so I can get to the... Oh, clear some crap out of the way. There we go. So I can get to the controller just see if there's only been any, been any water ingress in there. Or if there's any damaged wires or loose, loose wires. Sand in the wheels. Oh my god! And that's that's not good. Anyway, okay. Let me inspect this wire. frame but nothing nothing to shout about okay hopefully we can lift this up out of the way no, we'll take that off not a problem a bit of sound in the controller cavity but don't see any damaged wires or water's got in there at all there's no staining like there is on some parts of this 
Sand on the connector, but nothing inside that I can see. This is a strange one. I wish I had another back end to test it on. section. blow that out. Oh, sorry, deafen you with my glasses. It would blow out. I'm just gonna move you. Get my hose light. Never use it, but I've got it over here. Yeah, <sighs> compressor's going to start up.
jump the last one out. Just raise it up. That's my brake problem. Diagnosis is just about looking and seeing what you can see. break in situ and um I'm gonna take this way. Oh butter fingers excuse my butt Removing the motor again so I can get that brake off. I'm not going to put the new her brake back on, I'm just going to put it to one side but still connect it. That way I can tell if there's a, a motor issue. issue. These suspensions are good, but to get in the way of uh, ser servicing these things, but you always find a way. And once I've figured out what it is, I'll put new Loctite on those motors, screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. Check that, there's nothing on top of there, but anyway, get back to what I was doing. I need that, that. 964th. Take the brake off. This one's got either a dodgy wire or a a dodgy mic switch, which I haven't changed yet. I mean, if I don't have to change her breakout, that's one less thing. So, I'll remove all of those. 
So I can then unplug my brake because I was getting the same result with that brake. Okay. Now I can technically run the scooter with her brake in. I can see what's going on with it. Put it in gear, leave the motor out. And if it's a, a motor issue, I'll be able to see it. This hard bit. Because the wheels aren't on it. Let me unplug this brake and make life easier for myself. Get over that thing. Okay. Try and attach the back end. No. Uh, this doesn't make life very easy. Put the wheels back on. Okay. See if I make it easier to attach. I don't need the keyways because I don't want it going anywhere. Don't need it to drive. So. Yeah. Just want it to come together. So make connection. There we go. Just put them on the stops. So the brake, plug that back in, the motor's out, and plug for the brake. So this way I can see exactly what the brake's doing or not doing. So that's locked in gear. Probably hear that. It's nothing special. It's what it's supposed to do. Okay. Hearing the click of the controller. That's the first click. We'll remove this. So that's the click you hear of the relay in the controller. And the second click you're going to hear. The louder one is the brake releasing. the transaxle is starting to fail.
Hmm. Give it another couple of more tries. I didn't hear the brake go there. releasing okay there's the brake so it's locked in gear now with the throttle off so you can't move this but now it moves when you press the throttle as it should and then locks back in there and it locks in when it stops transaxle then but it's not doing what it did <sighs> I mean I have like 20 tests With the motor off, I can see it clearly spinning. I can hear it spinning. I don't know if you can see that. Down there is the motor. You can see that black thing in between that gap spinning round. You can hear the brake clicking cleanly. See that black thing spinning. Let's see if I can put some resistance on it. And hmm. I'm suspecting transaxle maybe just but no, that's when it starts. Normally transaxle is they'll lock up when they when they're basically uh, turning because you're putting pressure on one side and not the other. Makes any sense. Let's plug my wireless mic back in. Oh, come on. Ah, I don't know. Motor sounds all right. It's not grinding or it's moving freely. I've just, just got to leave transaxle. Anyway, I'll do for a minute. Let me mull it over. Okay, so what I've done is replace the motor, put the wheels back on. Everything's back in place apart from the brake, which I've left down there. And if you can see, it's on the back of the scooter. It's hanging out the back there. So I run it with the brake off. It's not the transaxle, unless the brake is causing the transaxle to do something that I don't know about. Um, but it ran fine. Different speeds, different throttle positions, different cornering. Um, I did blow out the connections. I should have tested it blown out the connections then tested it see if it cured it but there was some sand in that 
battery connection. So it, uh, that's all I can think of it could be. So what I'm going to do is put the brake on back on there and test it again and see if the symptoms come back again. But it, it run, like I say, I've just been around the showroom about 15 times, different speeds, different stop, start, stop, start. Didn't do it with the brake off. So put the brake on and see if it does it again. So hang fire. Okay, so I've got the brake back in. Now uh, I want to show you something with this. While I've got it on my table. So getting these uh, transaxles off of these frames is an absolute pain. And what they do is give you these holes here, as you can see, there and there. Because on the back, there is a 13 mil nut. And if you can see it, it's buried under there. And of course you can't get a socket in there or a wrench or a spanner in there to uh, lock it in place. So what I do is put a screwdriver in in there to try and wedge the bolt, the nut, in place while you undo it from there with a impact wrench. Doesn't need to be over tight, but you have to stick something in there in those holes. One side to tighten, one side to loosen, and that's what those holes are there for. Because otherwise, you can't get the. Uh, you can do it from this side, I guess, but you've got to be careful of your brake. But uh, I guess you could use snipe nose pliers and wedge them in there to hold the bolt in place while you undo that. I'll do that like that and then stick them in that side to tighten or loosen but that's that's what those little holes are there for just to tighten these up because they're mounted differently compared to uh, the other go-go's but yeah, got the brake on just got that bolt to put in at the top there yeah, which is there put some lock tight on it and then I can test it again. Just in case the motor decides to want to rattle itself loose. Zoom in. There you go. Uh, I'm going to have to take this one off. Everything's flying away today. Okay, so I can get in there with that. Just uh, go, boom. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm gonna just get it started with this at uh, a funny angle. Tighten it up with the Allen wrench. That's Could do the shorter Allen wrench to do this, but come on. There's no torque specs for these things, it's just, they don't give you anything like that. They don't have torque specifications for any of the bolts and those. I hear a lady. I emailed that place about that part. And okay. I also sent them the picture of what we got and also, um, that's it. Um, I'm going to go pick up a scooter. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, okay, that'll look great. I've got the work phone. I think we had two phone calls yesterday. It's that time of year. Nobody's doing anything apart from 
visiting friends and family or doing Christmas shopping. Oh, I hate Christmas. Oh, I'm getting used to it now. Don't like this time of year. Okay, pop that back on. I'll leave that to a minute. I want to test it first before I put it locked out on it. Always problems with Alex. I see this transaxle starting to wander as well. Not a lot. It's not making any problems yet, so. But it will. Oh, come on. What the heck? I'm looking at the wrong place. So no, that's all back together. Oh, come on. Uh, definitely a boat of fingers today. And pop that one down there. Always put your tools away. You're gonna need them. I couldn't use that, so I can go back in. sound. Jesus Christ. Yep, soon be his birthday. Allegedly. Okay, so I've got it all back together, as much as I'm going to put it all back together. Uh, got it all back together, going to test drive it again now. Her brake's back in place, let's see if it does the same thing. Stay tuned. Okay, test drive over, went around the store plenty of times. Not a problem. Stop, start, stop, start, different speed, different turning, wobbling, shaking it. Didn't stop once, didn't stall once, didn't sound like it was shorting out anywhere. So it must have been sand. So I'm videotaping this for the customer. You can see there's all sand in there. Don't take these scooters on the beach or anywhere near the beach. They're not made for sand, grass. Loose gravel, compacted gravel is okay, but if you get stuck, get off the scooter, push it till it gets traction again, and then carry on. Don't go in any standing water, no snow, no rain, no sleet, no hail. That's what that symbol means. Don't get them wet. Don't get sand in them. It must have been sand in that connection, so I'm going to... Just go over this, as you can see, there's all sand in there. Sand there, sand all over the motor, transaxle and brake. So, as you can see in the front section, all sand in the gears, that's going to get in the bearings, cause problems, you can see all sand in there. I'm not going to, I'm going to blow most of it out, but uh, leave enough in it just to show the customer that it didn't happen at the airport. Obviously, it got wet, it got sand in it, and it's caused a problem. So, that's your LX. I'm going to, like I say, blow it all out. And, uh, the front light still works. Yeah, blow it all out, clean the sand out so no more sand gets into that uh, battery connection. I didn't see anything in the motor connection, but there was sand on the motor connection but there was definitely sand inside the battery connection. So 
And sand is basically fine pieces of glass. Silica, basically. And it looked like that was what's causing it. So, and blow it all off, put it all back together, put the screws back in, and give the customer a call and tell her, pick it up. And no more driving in sand in Hawaii. So, hmm. Don't do it, folks. Wreck your scooters. Okay, so, get it cleaned up. Okay, the LX is back all together. I've dusted it out as much as I want to with all the sand in it, make sure the battery compartment's all clean, or the ha handle of the battery box was all full of sand. So it's actually uh, going to be called the Doom Buggy from now on. But I'm going to get Jenny to test it when she gets back, just to make 100% sure. Uh, probably take it outside. Uh, I won't do it now because I'm on, in the office on my own. So, but yeah, it seems to be okay. I think there was some pork pies going on about it. it stopped at the airport, but why is the sand all over it? Hmm. Anyway, so, but yeah, it's working again. As, as far as I can test it in here. So, yeah, there's your LX. As you can see, very similar to the uh, ZT, as in the same foot shroud, everything, battery box, same shrouds, front and rear. Same shrouds, front and rear, battery box is bigger on the ZT, but you, originally when you could buy these, you could get an 18 amp hour battery pack. That's what those, uh, those shrouds were there, the bigger shrouds for 18 amp, but uh, they stopped that. And uh, yeah, so, you can see it's very similar design apart from top console slightly different with the massive windshield on it windscreen and uh, yeah everything else is the same suspension frames probably even the same apart from the back frames different because of two motors but anyway i hope that you found this uh, video interesting how you go about diagnosing something that's intermittent especially uh, those intermittent faults are difficult to figure out but go methodically through it test things that you may not think of like sand in the battery connector who'd have thunk it but uh, yeah hopefully that's cured it if not if it's something else then you're looking controller or transaxle but it seems to be fine now i think it was just a bit of sand in the connections but yeah anyway so if you've enjoyed this video like share and consider subscribing to our channel helps us out immensely and we appreciate it so if you've got any questions put them in the comments below and i'll answer as best as i can or email sales at lasvegaslifts.com and uh, we'll help out as much as we can as uh, whatever information we've got we'll gladly help out and uh, yeah so hopefully that's the last we'll see of this this uh, dune buggy so that's going to be a nice little thumbnail for it. Anyway, till next time, thanks for watching. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if we don't uh, put another video up between now and Christmas, which is only a couple of days. So, till next time, thanks for watching. Bye now.